Hi there, welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. It's not working for me, hold on. Let's try something else here. There we go. <laughs> Having a rough start today. Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie. Tonight is episode 232, and I'm coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. A rainy Alpharetta, Georgia, in case you hear some weird pitter-pattering in the background. My craft room has um, sun uh, Skylight. skylights. Thank you. So <laughs> you have to bear with me. Words are hard for me today because I have been on conference calls since 12 o'clock Eastern time today. Non-stop calls. So it's been a crazy day. I've got easy projects for us tonight. Um, say hello and where you're watching from. I was saying hi to a few of you guys during the three minute countdown. That three minutes is to give you all a chance to get here on time for 8 p.m. Eastern time when we go live. But hi, Re, Hi, Rosina. Hi, Jeannie. Welcome. Hi, Alexandra from Germany. Yay. Welcome. Hi, Brenda, Barb, Amy. You guys are awesome. Thank you. I do have some show and tell from the kids tonight. They had um, teacher work days Friday and Monday. So a long weekend. They were watching um, coloring or drawing tutorials on YouTube. So they wanted to show you some of their creations. The kids got to spend the night at Mimi's house Saturday night. So Brian and I, it was the first time we were kid free for a night in two and a half years. So <laughs> we both fell asleep on the couch. We took a nap. It was awfully quiet around here. We had sushi for dinner. So it was a good little reprieve and the kids had a ton of fun too. So um, that was that was fun. Let's see, what else can I tell you? Let me go through, oh, Brian's ready for his um, cameo. This is my husband, Brian. He's helping me by watching your comments from both of you, from those of you watching on YouTube and Facebook. If you'll help us out by putting a Q colon in front of your question, we're gonna do a Q&A segment at the end of the live stream, sort of rapid fire, but that helps me focus on the projects and then we can get to your questions at the end. But put a Q colon in front of your question that way, we won't miss your questions. So I'm, we'll get used to how this rolls. Been doing this for a few weeks. Uh, my host code for the month of March, it is still March. Tilly, I was laughing at your comment. I completely forgot that tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day. I'm going to have to put some green food coloring in the potties for the leprechauns to visit for the kids. So anyways, my host code, you can see that on the screen, but the easiest way to add the host code to your orders with me is to use my shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop. That will auto magically take you to my Stampin' Up! online store and add the host code. And if you place an order of $50 or more, you'll get to choose a free gift from me this month from these three choices. Um, and if your order is 150 or more, make sure you remove the host code because you'll start to earn Stampin' Rewards on that order. If you leave the host code on, you miss out on the Stampin' Rewards and we don't want that to happen. So those are the free gifts. And we've got a couple of products that are available. They're um, specialty products. We've got the All Together Collection, which is sort of the launch of our Natural Tones Stampin' Blends. But along with that is a bundle, a stamp and die bundle, and some black and white patterned paper that all work well together. Some of the blends are currently unorderable, but those are going to be a permanent um, item in the annual catalog that launches on May 3rd. And I believe they're anticipated to be back in stock the week of April 4th. I haven't checked that date today, so correct me if I'm wrong. We've got the Waves of the Ocean collection, which actually we're gonna be using tonight. So let me show you a quick sneak peek. We're gonna be doing a double Z fold. It's taking up the whole screen. And then this really cute, you probably have seen this before. This is from Frenchie Martin, but oh my gosh, a little diaper hold treat basket. So, so cute, but we're using that stunning paper from the Waves of the Ocean collection. The paper, the foil specialty paper and the rhinestones are exclusive through May 2nd while supplies last, but the stamp set and die set are going to be in the annual catalog, okay? Let's see. Um, the mini boss or the mini stamp and cut emboss machine is 20% off during the month of March, as well as 13 select bundles that coordinate well with the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. That is through March 31st, so don't miss out on that if you don't already have the mini boss in your collection. And if you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like complimentary copies of our current catalogs, you can submit a catalog request with me at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. Now I know last week I mentioned 
that my current customers were going to be getting an email from me in a few days. I'm still working on that email. So if you thought you missed it, <laughs> I haven't sent it yet. It's been a hectic week for me. So I will be sending that hopefully by Friday and we're going to do, um, I don't want to send a catalog to you if you don't want one, but everybody that's ordered or shopped with me in the last six months will get an email so you can place your request for a catalog. I'll be ordering those first thing Friday, April 1st. Um, and then we'll, Brian and I will package those up and ship them out as quickly as we, as we can. Show and tell. All right, let's do the kids show and tell really quickly. Nolan is on a Minecraft bender, bender <laughs> as Brian calls it. This is a creeper. I had to be, I had to be taught on what these are called. This is a spider, but yeah, the mine creeper, mine, sorry, the creeper for Minecraft he was learning how to draw that. And this is a portal. I don't know where the portal goes to, but that's what he drew. And then Lily, I love this. So she watched a video by Draw So Cute. How adorable. I, I love the eyes. So Draw So Cute, in case any of you, you have young children or young grandchildren, she's a really great um, sort of illustrator teacher. She start, She draws with Sharpies. And so Lily just followed along and she said that this slice of cake was a fail but this was the winner and I actually like the little rainbow unicorn cake as well. But how fun is that? I might have, I'm definitely going to take a picture of this to save, but super colorful. This is a cat Pacino. <laughs> so cute. So yeah, um, my kids are third grade and kindergarten and um, they always like to pick some show and tell for you if you're new here. So why don't we jump into tonight's projects? Let me show you them one more time. So a double Z fold. And y'all, I've never made a double Z fold until today. <laughs> so I'm obsessed. I've done a Z fold before, but I don't think I've done the double Z fold. And I had to study and figure out the measurements. There's so many different ways to do a double Z fold. I don't know if you've tried, I'm sure you guys have tried at least a version of a double Z fold, but you can do so many different dimensions with the way that you put it together. So um, I can't get enough of the waves of the ocean designer series paper. It's still available, but again, this is a while supplies last. And if you're unfamiliar with this paper, it is actually basically photographs of an acrylic pour technique. So our concept artist literally did acrylic pouring and then took photos and the paper is absolutely stunning. You get 12 sheets of 12 by 12 double-sided paper in some gorgeous, gorgeous colors. Let me I don't have all the paper to show you, but I want to read you the colors really quickly. Calypso Coral, Coastal Cabana, Daffodil Delight, Granny Apple Green, Night of Navy, Pacific Point, and Petal Pink. So a really beautiful combination of colors. And I opted for the gorgeous Pacific Point and Granny Apple Green. There's some Night of Navy in here. And um, they call these cells, I believe, in acrylic paint pouring. And Nolan said that these cells here reminded him of Lily's teeth. I was like, well, I can kind of see teeth. <laughs> so anyways, out of the mouths of babes, right? So that is the double Z fold, really easy to do. And then this is our uh, diaper fold treat basket. I got to give a shout out to demonstrator Frenchie Martin here in the U.S. She shared this, I want to say in um, 2016. I think Leanne Greff shared it as well, but it is a cool classic so easy to make. This is perfect for your six by six designer series papers, as well as your 12 by 12, but because it uses a full sheet of six by six. And I'll show you how I did that really cool banner sliding through the sentiment piece. This die cut comes from the Waves of the Ocean collection. Okay, so why don't we start with, let's do the treat holder first. Why don't we do that? We'll swap it up this week. Got all my goodies behind me because I've made a mess on my table. <laughs> so, all right, you want to pick a designer series paper that does not directional. Let's go with this one. I got cut an extra piece in case I needed it. Um, you want to make sure that both sides don't really have a directional pattern because essentially you're going to be folding this on a diagonal and it would look a little bit weird if you had a directional pattern because it would be kind of on the angle. Not the end of the world, but try to focus on paper that's not directional. And I want this beautiful sort of coastal cabana color to be on the outside with the pop of Pacific Point and Night of Navy to be on the outside. So I'm going to fold this from corner to corner. You do want to have your bone folder handy. 
I'm just gonna fold and crease or burnish with my bone folder. So we're gonna start having a piece like that. Diagonally fold it in half. This is where the paper trimmer really helps. And we are gonna line up this open edge here. We're gonna kind of have it in that 90 degree angle, lining up that right edge at half of an inch. And I am gonna, I've kind of got my thumb here underneath the cutting arm. <laughs> I told you words are hard for me today. I'm gonna start, let me show you. I've got a piece of post-it tape that is running underneath those measurements so that I can see them. We want the blade to start at half of an inch. I think you can see where that line on the blade is lining up with a half of an inch. So let me see if I can strategically put this down without moving it. I'm gonna start there and I'm gonna cut down to two and a quarter. So just take your time. I'm gonna look over there and stop at two and a quarter. So we're basically making like a mid cut here. I'm gonna flip this over. So we did this, I'm gonna kind of flip it this way. We are cutting through both layers of paper at the same time, this blade because of its size will help us do that. I'm not moving that because we stopped that at two and a quarter. So I'm just gonna close the arm here and I'm gonna cut up to half of an inch. So the measurements to remember, start with a six by six, fold it in half diagonally. Then you wanna put your flat edge up here along the top. You've got the folded edge here on the diagonal and you're gonna cut from half of an inch down to two and a quarter. Let me know if y'all have tried this before. It's so, so cute. And then we've got those cutouts that went through both like so. And those are gonna be our little basket handles. Now there's a couple of different ways that you could do this. You could simply just fold this backwards. That works as well. I'm gonna try something a little different, different tonight just to show you something different. And I'm just gonna grab the Simply Scored here. I probably could have done the same thing on the paper trimmer, but I think you'll notice on my Simply Scored, Murphy, oh, um, our golden retriever is messing with her bed and her crate. Um, at the six inch mark, I've got a Sharpie line running right down the middle, okay? So I can line this up if I want to. I'm going corner to corner, just lining up on that Sharpie line. And what I can do is with the stylus, I can just come in Actually, let's do it on this side. I wanna basically just connect those cut lines. <laughs> Brian's going to go politely ask Murphy to stop, right? And I'm just basically trying to catch a groove here. This is not, um, doesn't necessarily need to be done, but as I'm sliding things around here, it does help. And I'm just basically connecting. You could do that on the paper trimmer as well, but just doing the score line there, okay? I'm probably a little bit off. So back to fold this again, and we're basically gonna fold backwards and burnish. And same thing on the opposite side, fold backwards and burnish. And you wanna do your best to line up those two folded edges there, okay? And you can pick whichever side doesn't really matter, but essentially I'm gonna fold that back out of the way and we're gonna bring up one of these corners to bring it right underneath this fold down. Now you want the edge to stop just before the end of that triangle. Oh, we've got all kinds of sound effects tonight, don't we? <laughs> you could probably just let her out, maybe. And we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. Again, stopping just before the end of that triangle. Let me bring that up close to show you. Stopping just before it. The doggies are joining the party with us tonight. I wish I had um, doggy cams. So I'm just gonna burnish on those edges. That's gonna fold down. And if, it, if you line it up fairly well, it's gonna look like that. Kind of lines up perfectly that way, okay? Now, quick and easy, I like using mini glue dots for this. And I know some of you have asked before, I just have a ribbon tied around it to kind of corral my glue dots here, but we just need four glue dots. I'm gonna start with these sort of arms that go left and right, and I'm putting it just behind that point to hold it into place. You could use liquid glue for this as well, but this is real quick and easy. Then again, underneath this diagonal, right there, <laughs> yes to a doggy cam. I mentioned a doggy cam. <laughs> that would be hilarious. And then on that other one, okay? 
so quick and easy. Look how cute that is. And then you've got a little pocket here. Now let me show you a couple of treats that will fit in here and then we're gonna embellish this. I don't have a shortage, I, I have no shortage of treats here. Um, let's see, where's my original? Oh, right here. <laughs> All right, so Ghirardelli squares are perfect for this. The best Ghirardelli squares are the ones that are just chocolate without any filling because they are a little bit thinner. Let me show you the difference there. See how the pink one is just a little bit thicker? So the ones that are just the pure, I think, dark chocolate or milk chocolate. So, ooh, Ava, I'm going to grab your question because it doesn't have a Q colon in front of it. Let me answer that really quickly. So there was a period of time that the mini glue dots were put on the roll backwards. So that's what you're experiencing. I have had a stash of glue dots for a very long time, so I haven't reached any of those rolls. But what I recommend you do is you, it's, it'll take a little bit of time, but unroll it and re-roll it so it's going the right way. Because I think it makes it more challenging for you to use on the opposite side. So I hope that's a good trick, tip or trick for you, okay? All right, so I just wanted to show you. So that Ghirardelli square fits in there really nicely. Then the thicker one fits as well. I like to fold the little wrappers out of the way. So that fits, but you'll see that it's opening it up. It's opening up, ugh, told you words are hard. Opening it up a little bit more. The little York peppermint patties, these are little mini ones. That will fit nicely in there. That green would be cute for St. Patrick's Day. This is actually an Easter package of peppermint patties. And then Ghirardelli always comes out with these cute little bunnies for Easter. You could put one in there kind of sideways. You could put it two in there. You can have fun. You can put little crinkle cuts in there, do some fun stuff to make it look like a basket. So my favorite of the bunch is the Ghirardelli squares without the filling. Those fit in there really nicely. But how cute would this be to have, um, I think Frenchie did hers for Christmas, but it was so cute for little table favors or to add, um, to include with your tip for a waiter just to give them a little piece of chocolate. Maybe put you could put their cash in there for a tip. So lots of really cute things. Let's go ahead and decorate this. I have got just a scrap piece of basic white. And then I'm glad that tip is helpful on the glue dots because I have heard from many of you about it and it's such a weird phenomenon. My understanding is the that has since been fixed. So I'm not even showing you the stamps that we're using. <laughs> had fun picking my dies for this. We're using four different die sets on tonight's projects, but here is the Waves of Inspiration stamp set. This distinctive wave stamp, I don't, I'm not demonstrating it tonight, but it is absolutely gorgeous. It's that acrylic paint pour technique, but then made to look like a wave. But we're using the sentiment, you're so totally awesome, which is my favorite sentiment in the bunch. Here are the Waves dies, and we're using this die, got some post-it tape stuck to it, but it's got stitching on it. Great for running ribbon through it. It's a very versatile die. This one's a narrower one that you can put maybe some twine through it. Really cute. But lots of fun dies in this set. You got some clouds and then two different waves, which are gorgeous cut out with the specialty foil that comes in the collection. All right, hopefully my voice holds out. I've reached my word quota for today, as my husband likes to say. Or do I like to say that? <laughs> so this is Pacific Point that I'm stamping. We'll bring this back out again when we do the card. And then I'm just gonna line up, I've got post-it tape on here that is linked on my favorites page, in case you wanna check that out, paperpixie.com slash favorites. I'm gonna go ahead and line up. Put our post-it tape in place. This is the only die cutting I'm doing tonight. I think everything else I did ahead of time. Just to save some time. And this will work in the mini machine as well. I just grabbed what was closest. <coughs> Excuse me. I love the detail on this because you're going to get not only those cool openings at the either edge, but that stitching 
and that sentiment perfectly fits in there. Now I've got a piece of, this is, I believe the Coastal Cabana, it's going to have a hard time focusing here, specialty foil from the Waves of the Ocean collection, and this measures five eighths of an inch by three and five eighths. I didn't write that measurement down. You'd be fine probably with three and a half or three and five eighths if you want to maximize your paper there. I mean, you can get a ton of pieces this size out of it. We're going to use the Banners Pick a Punch. Now, because this is five eighths of an inch, you got to be real careful when you punch here because the trays here are half inch, three quarters, and one inch. So five eighths is kind of between the half and the three quarters. So I like to just kind of start to feed it in there. We're going to do the banner punch out. You can do this with a pair of scissors. You can do this with a tailored tag punch. But I just want to make sure, I'm eyeballing to make sure that we've got that centered. Let me turn it that way. Centered left to right. So don't really worry about putting it in the tray. It's going to want to go into the tray. But you can usually get it where you want it. Oop. Paper confetti flying around. We're gonna punch both ends like so, okay? All right, now this is totally up to you. For this, I think the uh, this project I did glue dots, but I'm gonna attempt to do something a little different with this one. I almost never use this. This is not my adhesive of choice, but let's use some, what's this called? Stampin' Seal Plus. I'm just gonna put a little bit on the back side of that that we're going to stick our foil to. Just a little bit. Use any tape runner. Use liquid glue as well. But I'm basically going to feed through the right, back up through the left. I'm not pressing down yet because I want to get that into place. That kind of centered left to right. And then stick it down. But look how cute that is with the banner ends. Really cute again with ribbon as well. Get that covered up. All right, and then dimensionals. I am actually just going to do two. I did three on the sample, and I think you'll see that this side is kind of popping up underneath there because we've got a few layers of the designer series paper. So let's just do two, like right in the center there. So that should stick to that darker blue triangle. And we'll pop that on the front there. So totally awesome. <laughs> and in the collection of products are these gorgeous rhinestones and they come in so many different blues and greens. So let's grab my take your pick tool and we'll go for a Coastal Cabana one. I'm just gonna pop that up off to the upper right there for a little bit of bling. Put our chocolate in there. And we've got a really cute little basket treat holder. Started off as the, well, it is the diaper fold, but then we've added that cute little handle there. Normally what you would do with this is you'd fold the whole triangle down, but that little cutout I think is genius. So Frenchie, thank you for the wonderful idea. Super cute. These are super addicting too, especially if you have a lot of designer series paper left. This is one of those great projects to use up your stash. And I know we all have one of those, so. Use up that beautiful paper, and then you can give out some really cute treats for so many different occasions. So there we go. That is the diaper fold treat basket, okay? Now, let's jump into the card. I'll show you that one more time here. That This is the double Z fold. I think you can see, because it's like, zzz, zzz, that's what I want to do right now is sleep. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, I'm not really kidding, but... <laughs> All right, let me get all my pieces and parts here. We're gonna start with a normal card base. This is four and a quarter by 11 inches. And we are going to score this at two, two and three quarters. I always flip to the smaller end. I don't know if anybody else does that. Two and three quarters, then I'm gonna flip it and five and a half. So that's the halfway mark, and then we basically divided this section in half, okay? I've got another piece. This is where the crazy phenomenon of a double Z fold. I was like, wait, those measurements are the same. So we're gonna start off with a different size. This is two and three quarters by nine and a half. 
and we're gonna score again at two and three quarters, flip it, and five and a half. So crazy, right? <laughs> so that's easy. Put the smaller one off to the side. Let's focus on the bigger one. Now we've got a valley score line is in the center. Come on, focus, there we go. I'm going to turn that into a mountain fold. Then this is a mountain score line. I'm going to turn that into a valley fold. This is the basics of the first part of the Z. So this is going to be our inside back. This is going to end up being our front. Okay. All right. So grabbing some designer series paper, we're going to start with the biggest piece. I mean, look at this. I can't even with this. This was hard to cut into if I'm being honest, because it's so pretty, so pretty to look at. And I don't know if you can tell, this pattern not as much. You can see it a little bit. Do you see the texture of the canvas? Like this is literally a picture of them pouring acrylic paint onto canvas. How cool is that? Love it. All right, liquid glue is our friend because it gives us some time to get our layers into place. Now, liquid glue is one of those things. Everybody's got their, or adhesive is one of those things. Everybody's got their preference. I love the extra wiggle room and how economical it is because I use a lot of glue. All right, so that's going on the inside back. And if you have any raised edges from the paper trimmer, just come in with your bone folder and you can smooth those edges out. I've got two more pieces. These are portrait if you had a directional paper and you want these to be cut two and a half by four. So I essentially cut a four inch strip and I cut two pieces at two and a half and one piece at five and a half. Sorry, five and a quarter. I don't think I told you the measurements of this one. Four by five and a quarter, okay? These two are two and a half by four, okay? So we're just gonna glue those down. I think I want that one to be on the front. That one's a little more interesting. Ooh, you guys got good questions tonight. Looking forward to the Q&A. Just a reminder, if you don't see your question pop up during the Q&A, it's probably because you don't have a Q colon in front of it. So if you've asked a question without the Q colon, make sure you re-ask it. I don't want to miss any questions. I do go back and read all your comments. All right, layering that down. Got a couple of raised edges here, so I'm just gonna smooth those down. It was starting to look really cool, and I think I may have kept this all, maybe not this one, <laughs> but I cut these all from the same piece. Very, very cool. Now we're gonna take this piece and get this one ready. Again, we're gonna turn the valley score line into a mountain fold and burnish. And then the mountain score line into a valley fold and burnish. So this one is essentially going to just layer over the top like so, and I'll show you the trick to put that together. Ultimately, it'll be able to open all the way and close all the way, okay? So I'm going to take this piece, which is two and a half by two and a half. Look how cool those white cells are in there. Love those. I'm just going to adhere that to this middle panel. Now, let me just point out we've got a mountain on the left and a valley on the right. It actually doesn't matter. It's still the same panel in case you do it backwards. Well, I take that back. You don't want to adhere it on this side, okay? <laughs> so got our, your larger section on the right, mountain fold, valley fold. We'll put that in the center. Now, I have got two pieces that I die cut. We're using three different die, set, die sets tonight. So we've got the scalloped contours dies and I'm doing that middle scalloped cut. I love the scalloped edges with the stitching and I've cut two pieces of that from basic white. I've also cut a layering circle 
from Coastal Cabana, and it's the one that measures one and three eighths in diameter. And then out of the specialty foil, look at that butterfly, and that is coming from the Brilliant Wings dies. This is a great giant set of wings of butterflies, but that pop of the Pacific Point, I think it's Pacific Point, they might be calling this Knight of Navy foil, but there's three different colors, silver, I think it's Coastal Cabana, and either Knight of Navy or, or Pacific Point, I can't remember off the top of my head. <laughs> Brian is reminding Lily, it's time to stop reading. She's our bookworm. All right, so let's start with one of these pieces. One we're gonna keep blank, just cut like it is. That's gonna be where you can write your little note to the recipient. This one, we're gonna stamp our You're So Totally Awesome sentiment in Pacific Point. Knight of Navy would work for this as well. Mix and match those colors. I'm gonna just try to get it straight. Yay! We're gonna start with the bottom here first. I'm gonna take this piece, move it out of the way here, and I'm gonna adhere our scalloped piece to this side, okay? Now be careful not to get the liquid glue anywhere near that stitching or it's gonna ooze through the stitching. And if you're like me and you might make a mistake writing on this, write your note before you adhere it. <laughs> Sometimes I'll stash just the insert with my cards unadhered so I can write the note and then I can glue it down when I know that I'm good to go. Okay. And then we are going to then layer this piece. I'm kind of building this piece out first. I want to do my best to line up those scallops. Now, you could absolutely do just rectangular pieces of cardstock here. If you wanted to do that, let me give you the measurements. You'd want to do three and three quarters by two and a half. That's the size of the scalloped piece. So if you don't have this set of dies, you can absolutely just cut rectangles for that. And I'm just like a little bit off with my fold here. So let me just straighten things up a tiny little bit so that the scallop doesn't look too out of place. Lining up those scalloped edges, that's better, okay? So I'm just eyeballing. I only wanna put adhesive on the back left of this, but I don't wanna go, I'm gonna kind of go four, like the corner, four scallops in, if that makes sense. I'm gonna just flip it over. And we're gonna wanna stop, one, two, three, four. Let's stop about here. You just don't want glue to be near these four scallops, because those, the problem is it will Stick where you don't want it to stick. So liquid glue is great here. Just line up those scalloped edges. Press that into place. And that's kind of the start of the interior Z fold. Part of the half of the double, if that makes sense. Okay. Now what we can do is on the back of this larger piece, we're going to put adhesive on that and then center it in this panel. The last thing we'll do is glue this side down. That's just going to help you get this all lined up. Slide that into place here. You're gonna have about five eighths of an inch of the waves of the ocean paper showing through, okay? All right, so essentially, this is how we're gonna glue it down. It is gonna lay flat, but we only want to put adhesive on the left again, but we wanna stop, Let's see, I'm going about a half an inch from the score line. So if we kind of eyeball that, I'm gonna take my ruler and just kind of put it at the half inch. Hold on, was it half inch? Let me make that, double check that again. Three quarters of an inch. I thought I needed to check that. So I'm just lining up the three quarters of an inch. I don't want any glue from here, sorry, from here to the left. So that's just kind of helping me eyeball it. You could use a pencil if you needed to. So I'm gonna fold this down, fold this back. Oops, I gotta flip that <laughs> scallop over. We're just gonna, before the adhesive adheres, I'm gonna press down here, but then I'm also going to open it all the way and press down. 
so it's flat. There you go. Look at that. Double Z fold. It does lay flat, which makes it easy for you to write your sentiment. I love that. This will not be my last Z fold card, that's for sure. And then for the front, I saved time. I already die cut the butterfly for us, but I've got our one and three eighths inch diameter circle die cut. Just gave a little bit of pop for the butterfly. I'm just gonna kind of center that in the corner with the stitching. And I'm just gonna use liquid glue right on the butterfly's midsection and sort of center that. So we're not covering the sentiment, but it's centered in the circle. And then let's grab the green, I think this is granny apple green rhinestone here. And we're just gonna pop that for a little bit of bling right in the center of that butterfly. But you can't go wrong with putting that anywhere on the front panel. And that is, I'm gonna clean up my, tidy up my mess here. That is our double Z fold featuring the Waves of the Ocean collection. I did sort of dive into a couple of different die sets, but that's kind of the fun thing. Those of us who are crafters, that we've got all kinds of fun dies and things in our stash. So I just jumped into the stash. I thought the butterfly looked really pretty with this acrylic paint pour. This two, by, two and a half by two and a half inch piece in the center, if you wanted to conserve your designer series paper, that is totally unnecessary, but I thought that was kind of cool to have that um, as, as opposed to being a solid piece of Pacific Point. So lots of fun, fun with that scallop contour die as well. So there we go. Those are our projects for tonight. Where's my chocolate? Oh yeah, it's in this one. <laughs> Those are tonight's projects. So I'm giving myself a break this week from a pre-recorded video tutorial. So my live stream will be this week's video for you, a tutorial for these. You can always come back to watch the replay. I will link to this live stream in my blog post. So this card will post to my blog tomorrow. That's the plan. And I'll link to directly where we started this card in the video so you can watch that replay. But I'll have all the measurements and um, supplies and everything listed in that blog post. You can come back to it anytime. And then I'll have this project post on Friday, again, linking to the live stream this week. So just with my crazy schedule this week, that's what we're gonna do. And um, let's jump into a little bit of Q&A. So let me quick switch to this. Let's tee things up. If you do have a question, put Q colon in front of your question. And then we will, I'm gonna just do Q here because I saw a few of you um, that didn't do the colon and that's okay, we're learning. So hi Susan, hi Vey, thank you. I like the Q&A at the end too. It gives me a chance to really focus on your questions. Hello PJ. Tabs that identify the colors of your paper. Could you show us how to identify the paper colors? Yes, let me, I think what you're talking about is what's behind me on the wall. Let me go back to this. Okay, so. I just have, I use a label maker. These are pockets from Stampin' Storage. I think this was what you're asking, Patty, but correct me if not. So I just use my brother P-Touch label maker. I label both sides, but then that helps me see uh, what color I'm looking at, because some of the colors look similar, like Bumblebee and Crushed Curry. But let me know if that's not what your question was. Let's go back to... Q&A here, okay. How do I do my shows for the host shows? Hmm, country girl, I don't know what you mean by that. Um, but if you can come back and clarify what your question is, I don't do um, workshops if that's what you're referring to. I just open a host code. It allows me to pull together all my customers' orders and give back with free gifts and things during the month. So I think that might be what you're referring to, but let me know if, um, if I'm misunderstanding. Do they ever bring back the special papers? Benita, sometimes they will come back in the clearance rack. I, I don't know, I think we're probably due for a clearance rack refresh here soon. I don't know when, we never know until like the night before. Um, but that, like the Eden's Garden may come back in a clearance rack if they still have inventory available. So stay tuned for that. Oh yes, Marcy, um, Murphy's doing great. She is completely recovered. She had how many x-rays? three 
follow-up x-rays after the two she had at the doggy emergency room to make sure that the pneumonia was com completely clear. So she's doing great. She just turned 13 in January. So we are blessed to have had her as long as we have. So we hope for a few more years with her. But um, yeah, she's doing great. Thank you for asking. How far down would you cut the basket handle for a 12 by 12? Hmm, Nancy Lee, that is a great question. I don't think it would be as easy as doubling the measurements. Now with a 12 by 12, you might wanna have a one inch handle, but I may have to play around with that with a scrap piece of designer series paper and get back to you. That's a great question. Um, Belinda, can you use regular cardstock for the treat bag? You're gonna have difficulty when you fold over the, um, the diagonal kind of arms. It looks like it's like the treat pouch is hugging itself. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe that part. That's going to get really thick with cardstock. So I would try to stick with um, like a scrapbook or patterned paper that's that lighter weight, but it's worth a try. I just think you're going to have a tough time or the uh, paper fibers might start to break. Um, what's the rule with, what's that origami rule? Like you can only fold any size paper eight times. There's some like weird, <laughs> there's some weird number with that. I think with cardstock, it's probably even less, but. Please share how you store your dyes. All right, so I'm gonna share a couple of bits, a couple of it, and then I will, I will share a couple of different things. So um, a lot of these things are listed on my favorites page. That's the paperpixie.com slash favorites. I absolutely love, these are all double, they've got double pocket or double magnet cards, but I love the Stampin' Storage magnet cards. I opt for the five by seven. They've upgraded these over the years. They've got this beautiful, patterned backing on it and I think you can see how shiny it is this will actually you can actually store your stamps on the back believe it or not they added that updated um, sort of film on the back or backing so you can actually stick your both photopolymer and cling mounts to the back but I love their five by seven it's it's pretty good for most and I can fit two magnet cards in one of these pockets now these pockets I'm super particular about my pockets and I've always been on the hunt for my favorite and this one I've stuck with the longest. These, these are C-Line 5x8 job ticket holders. They are listed on my favorites page. I trim them down to seven and a quarter. So they're obviously like eight and change um, and they've got a little hanger on the top but I trim them down to seven and a quarter so that they perfectly fit. And I, then I use my brother P-Touch it's the Cube Plus. That's also linked on my favorites page. I have a couple of label makers, but that's the one I use for this because I can get this one inch or it's 0.94 inch label, but I can add the name of the dies, the item number, the count of the dies, and which stamp set it coordinates if it's got a coordinating stamp set. And then these, it'll be hard for me to show, but I store them in a drawer in Stampin' Storage's Creative Crate. And they just all line up this way and I can just flip through and look at the labels. I love it. I have too many dies, but they fit in my, I have, I think the large, there's three different sizes of the creative crates, but I absolutely love those. Great question. I have not reached a million dollar sales, Carla, but thank you. I'm actually coming up on, um, I think before the end of this month, I will reach my $400,000 sales milestone. So um, I'm excited about that. Great question. Denise, well, I, I always use the scoreboard. So for me, the scoreboard gives me more accurate score lines because I know that there, as long as you have the cardstock butted up against the top and the left, those score lines are gonna be more accurate than me trying to line up the edge along a measurement. So if I'm doing more detailed score lines, like at the 16th inch me measurements or increments, I will definitely use the paper trimmer, but I love the Simply Scored. It's probably hands down my favorite tool. There's, I have like a top 10 list of favorite tools, but the Simply Scored really is my favorite. And I just find that those score lines are a little bit more accurate because there's a little bit of human interaction when you're using the paper trimmer to um, do score lines. Hopefully that makes sense. The price of the Waves product. Um, did you happen to look that one up? Okay, so the whole sweet collection, Norlean, is $79.25. If you want just the bundle, which will be in the annual catalog, that is $51.25. That is at the 10% discount. The papers are typical prices, so 
11.50 for the designer series paper and 10 for the 12 by 12. I think that's it. Let me know if you need any more prices. Brian's got it pulled up on his screen. The stamp set itself is 23 and the dies by themselves are 34. This is all US prices. Um, and the rhinestone basic, rhinestone waves basic jewels are 650, okay? So you could cut from the same sheet and make the edges match. Yes, Ava, if you're asking about the card, um, yes. So I would, as I had mentioned, you want to cut a four inch strip and then you'll cut two and a half, two and a half, five and a quarter, and those will all be in line. The two and a half by two and a half inch square, which is kind of optional if you wanted to add that to the, your inner Z fold, um, you wouldn't have enough left in that 12 inch strip, the four by 12 inch strip, but, um, you know, you just cut it from another section of that paper and it still still coordinates really well. Hello, Nalita. Is my craft room almost ready? I was waiting for this question. It is not yet. Hopefully, um, usually a good time for me is when I'm transitioning from one catalog to another. So the annual catalog will be launching on May 3rd. We're gonna get, I think, the retiring list at the end of March. Um, Usually the month of April is me kind of moving what's retiring. I put that away until my retired item sale, which usually happens around June or July, because I know that'll be the next question. And um, I don't know, I'm gonna, my goal is for this summer. So definitely this summer, right? Brian's gonna hold me to it. Cause he's like, we gotta do that craft room tour. Craft, room tour, craft rooms are always so personal, but I know that I probably have some tips and tricks and you all wanna see behind the scenes. You can't see it here, but I do have a behind the scenes camera up here that once it's presentable, I will turn that on during the countdown timer and you can kind of get a view from behind me what my room looks like, but great question. <laughs> Ooh, these are fun. How do I organize my paper scraps? So Vicki, I throw the paper scraps right back into the pocket with cardstock. And then the pockets that I store my designer series paper in, I chuck the scraps right in there as well. I find that if I store them elsewhere, which I think I've tried to do before, I never go back to use them and I just end up with more scraps. So I try to keep them in the pockets. I just chuck them in and I go to the scraps first before I go to the full sheet of cardstock or designer series paper. For the scallop part, I just did the regular basic white. I didn't use the thick, but you could absolutely use the thick. The butterfly die is the Brilliant Wings dies. There's a great stamp set that comes with it. So this die, this big one, is actually all one die. You get six butterflies in one cut, and there's a stamp set that's all one big stamp set. So it is a great way to maximize your time and energy by doing one stamp, one pass through the stamp and cut emboss machine, and then you have six beautifully intricate butterflies with, um, I think the stamp, I don't know if the stamp set's distinctive, but it's got really detailed butterfly line image on it. It's stunning. I love that bundle. I don't think, actually, it's probably not bundled anymore. <laughs> um, I just got the mini and it cranks hard. So Carol, here's a little tip with the mini machine because it is built a little bit differently than the big machine because as you've noticed, the sandwich... I don't know where my plates are for that machine. I thought they were right here, but you, as you'll notice, the sandwich for the mini machine is much narrower. So try staggering the clear plates just a little bit. Don't put them directly top on top of each other so that the full thickness is going in the machine at once. You wanna pull that top plate back just a little bit and then feed it in your machine that way and hopefully the cranking will get a little bit easier. Try flipping plates, that type of thing, but it should get a little bit easier. Let's see. When might we hear about the retiring products? So I believe demonstrators get to see the list on March 23rd. We get to see the new catalog PDF, that's a perk of being a demonstrator on March 23rd, and we'll also see the retiring list. And I think that means if we get to see the list, we can share it with our customers then. I'm not clear on that yet, um, but around March 23rd, that week between, definitely by April 1st, but I think March 23rd. What I store my six by six paper in are Avery L, pull this back a little bit, Avery L pockets. These again are, <coughs> excuse me, 
listed on my favorites page. These are six and three quarters by nine and three eighths, I believe is the size. And I trim them down to six and a half. Yes, I trim them down to six and a half, but you could do six and three quarters. I store these in a drawer, but then same thing. I can just chuck my scraps in there with it. And these hold up pretty well. They're pretty sturdy pockets. Um, a little bit better than cellophane, not quite as nice as the stamp and storage pockets, but those I think for the six by six are open on two sides and I like the pocket so I can make sure that my scraps stay safe. I do have pockets for my 12 by 12 Cynthia and I haven't shared details on that yet, but I use the um, 12 by 12 from stamp and storage. They are not sized to fit in the Ikea shelves, but the, um, what's the question? I'm repeating it. Oh, no, oh, you, re I got it. I think the 12 by 12. Yeah, that's her name. Oh, Carrie Ann. Okay. Um, the, Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, I do the 12 by 12 pockets from Stamp and Storage. They do not fit in the Ikea, but I trim them off. Let me show you an example, because I like having only open on the top. I know it's kind of hard to see here in the video, but I have to trim them off in order to fit into my shelves and I have to put them in sideways. <laughs> so, but I love these, I love the Stamp and Storage ones because they're really durable. But again, I have to trim them down. Now I have a really big trimmer. So that's why I've hesitated to share because um, many of you won't have a trimmer that's long enough to cut because these pockets are like 12 and 3 quarter inches long. So they don't fit in many paper trimmers. But that's what I've used. Um, Cropper Hopper has some as well. I think it's better by Cropper Hopper or Advantis. Something similar to that. But if, you've, if you don't have the Ikea shelves, you shouldn't have a problem fitting them, but yeah, some of that, that could be a problem depending on what shelves you're trying to store it in. I do have a yearly sale on my retired product bunny. Um, Stampin' Up! does as well, but I will do um, a sale of my personal stash of retired items, usually in the June to July time frame. Customers and team members get first dibs on that. And then I open it up to the public. I usually give them a few days notice ahead of time so they get to shop my retired items first. One of the perks of being a customer or team member of mine. And then I will post it out to the public. So stay tuned for that. If you are subscribed to my blog, that will be posted in a blog post as well. I haven't picked the date yet. Let's see. Now Nancy is giving a tip for you, Brenda, to use the gray plate and that works. And the gray plate is the um, thicker embossing folder plate. So that is a possibility to try something a little different there. So I think you're saying you're using that instead of two clear plates. Although the gray plate you can't cut on. So keep that in mind. All right. I think we've reached the end of the questions. Did I miss any? Oh, there was the question. What pockets? I think I answered that. Pockets to store my cardstock and my designer series paper, both from Stamp and Storage. The 12 by 12 and the eight and a half by 11. Would the gray plate work on the other? It should, yes, Christine. Um, actually, I think you can see that right at the bottom of the question. So the gray plate is the same as the blue plate that many of you were familiar with when we had the Sizzix machine, the big shot, right? Yeah. So the blue plate and the gray plate are the same and that's for the 3D embossing folders, most 3D embossing folders. So a quick tip on that. If your 3D embossing folder has the word Sizzix on it, you do not want to use the gray plate or the blue plate, okay? Because that'll be too thick. If it does not say Sizzix on it, then you use the gray plate or the blue plate. So look for that Sizzix. If it says Sizzix, those are the thicker 3D embossing folders. If it does not say Sizzix, the thinner ones. Are we good? Oh, but it, I gotcha. It's, I've got it filtered by Q. Um, let's see, let me go ahead and take that off. And then I think we're done with the Q&A. Let's see. Oh, I'm seeing one more question. Do I have a monthly card project kit? I do not, Rhonda, just the, well, are, I, 
I personally don't offer a monthly card kit. The only monthly card kit that Stampin' Up! offers is, well, it's not always a card kit, but Paper Pumpkin. They do have other kits, the kits collection. Those are available while supplies last. You can find that on the Stampin' Up! website and see the different kits. There's a new kit that just dropped called Robots something or other. I ordered one for Nolan because he's always jealous that Lily gets her paper pumpkin. Um, hopefully that answers your question. Alrighty, let's see. Thank you guys so much for joining me for tonight's live stream. Great questions tonight. I always love interacting with you this way and answering your questions. As always, you can reach out in the middle of the week if you have questions. Either put a comment on my blog, uh, use the contact form on my blog, or send me an email, julie at thepaperpixie.com. I will be live next week for episode 233. If you enjoyed tonight's video and you got some tips and tricks to take away with you, Please remember to like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube and like and follow if you're watching on Facebook. So I will see you all again next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, episode 233. Happy St. Patrick's Day, and I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I'll see you next Wednesday. Take good care. Bye.